Welcome everyone to Fresh from the Studio. Tonight's program features artists Carol Heyman, Heidi Lowell, and Deanna Meesh. We'll learn about Carol Heyman's printmaking process and work in Print Austin, get a sneak peek of Heidi Lowell's work for an upcoming show at Winter Street Studios in Houston, and then take a tour of Deanna Meesh's new gallery, Lydia Street Gallery. Thanks for being here for the kickoff. Here's how it's gonna work. Each artist will present for 10 minutes um, their project or work. At the end of the third presentation, we'll open it up for questions from all of you and comments from to, to the artist. Then we'll open up breakout rooms where you will have the opportunity to say hello, socialize and talk more directly to the artist. Um, the breakout rooms will be open for about 10 or so minutes and then we'll all come back together wrap it up and share upcoming programs and events. And you're welcome to add your upcoming events into the chat too. Um, are we ready to start? Without further ado, Heidi Lowell. Hey there guys. My name is Heidi and um, I am going to be uh, sharing the work I'm preparing for a show at Sawyer Yard. Um, Diane, you said it was at Spring Street Studios and I told you the wrong thing. We had to move because of the pandemic. So we're at Winter Street Studios now. We were originally gonna be at Spring Street Studios. Um, so uh, I'm, uh, the show that's happening in Houston is called Color Story, and it's curated by Leslie Goarecki and Marlo Saucedo, and they put out um, a call for poets to submit work, and then we as the artists got to look through their work and collaborate with the poets to create a work. This was going to happen in November um, and got postponed. We're going to keep the date in April and maybe a virtual show. Um, I have been working from home and we're all here. So I'm going to give you a quick glance in my studio space. It's pretty tiny. And um, I wanted to share with you guys a little bit about the poets that I picked to collaborate and the writers. Um, this is Loretta Diane Walker, and uh, she has won many awards. She is, uh, there's a PBS special, which I can um, put the link in the chat about her. And this is her poem that I picked to paint called Poet Dreaming. And uh, it really resonated with me as a mother and as an artist, the idea that you can be off uh, envisioning and dreaming about something and also have your child run up to you midway through that thought and be like, look at this. Um, I haven't gotten, even though I love this poem, I haven't gotten very far on painting this one yet. I um, did a mock-up in Photoshop, which I did not like, and I have a new sketch and I have secured some models. We will see how this one goes, but this is really in the beginning phases, this particular painting. And the second writer who I'm collaborating with is Tom Squitteri. And he's also um, has many accolades. I picked his poem um, about, it's called Tomatoes Tell the Truth. This is my base layer and I work in watercolor fresco. Um, I'm not especially excited about this painting yet and I still need to incorporate words. Um, there is a good chance that I'll sand off this clay board completely and start over and just leave whatever stains have soaked into the clay and restart. And you'll see a image of that in my next one. 
Um, my third poet is Amy Hale Auker. She is a uh, cowboy poet who I met at an event and I just loved her down to earth. Um, perspective on life and her poems about femininity and even cows giving birth. It just so deeply resonated with me and the human experience of it. Um, this poem, Bare Sold, is about uh, making mistakes and being adventurous in life and taking risks. I got the farthest on this painting so far. I really don't like it because it doesn't look wild enough for me yet. So um, as you can see here, I've got my sander and I frequently will just sand off the top layer of the clay board that I paint on and then paint again. And so this one is going to be probably mostly sanded off. I'll probably keep some of it as an underpainting just because I like to keep that history of each work. Let's see. Uh oh. Oh, and then you got to hear my sander. Um, the fourth poet I'm working with is, our fourth writer is Catherine Center. She's a writer based out of Houston and she is a New York Times bestseller. I've read all of her books. They're really uplifting reads for the pandemic. I picked, oh gosh, I didn't keep her po poem in here. It's called You Are Beautiful. And it's a poem about the pressure we face as females around appearance and how every, uh, everything we perceive as a flaw is really part of our beauty and the beauty comes from uh, love and connection. And I just thought that was um, something that felt really meaningful and healing to me as a, a woman in our world. And so for this one, I'm gonna stop share so I can share uh, this music with it real fast. Uh oh. Oh. I'm like locked out of. Can y'all see this? Ah, there we go. Okay. And. Oh, so for her poem, I thought a lot about my own style and how to portray this struggle for women to just feel inherently beautiful in a society that's full of so many Photoshopped images. And as I thought about it, I was meditating and came to the image of a swan because that's, um, a symbol of something that maybe wasn't initially thought beautiful and is beautiful. So here's, uh, I try to record when I Okay, and so 
So those are the four pieces I'm working on. Um, thus far, I feel the happiest with my swan piece for You Are Beautiful. I feel confident that that one is on track to getting finished as is and not sanded off. I did want to show you that process though, that I keep those under paintings because, and this ties into the self love and acceptance. Um, I keep the under paintings and all the flaws or scars that get on my paintings because it, it reminds me of Kintsugi, the uh, Japanese ceramic technique where I'm sure a lot of you know of it. When the ceramics are broken, they repair them with gold. So I love to keep the underpaintings beneath my final paintings and then adorn some of the parts that are scratched or didn't come out the way I wanted with gold. So that's symbolic of that sort of heroine's journey of facing your darkness or flaws and coming out on the other side with self-acceptance and, and uh, love. And um, that's all I have to share about my work at the moment, Diane. Thanks for letting me share with you guys. Yeah, that was great. Thanks so much, Carol. Yeah. Next up is Carol Heyman. Hey, so, um, well, Diane, thank you for inviting me to be in this. And um, I, I'm really happy that it happened right now because we're right in the middle of Print Austin, which has uh, print events going on all over Austin from January 15th to February 15th. So the timing was really perfect. And the kind of printing that I work in is photo intaglio. So I wanted to start off with just a brief explanation of the, the process here. So it's nowadays I'm doing everything digital. So it starts off with a digital photograph. And then, then I have a transparency made, which looks like this. And so I put it on a plate like this. And the way that I do it is I lay the transparency over the plate and then expose it to ultraviolet light. And I use a light box, but you can use the sun if you want. And so then um, you harden it with just with water so it's very non-toxic and so on and so then this is what it looks like so this is the plate so this is quite quite a small one and it was it's easy to show uh, in this this format so so then um, after the the plate is uh, developed with the water it's hardened again in ultraviolet light so I just put it out in the sun for a little while till it gets nice and hard and then I take it over to Slugfest Print Studio and print it. And so what you do then is you take it like this and you wipe ink on it. And then you lay, take paper like this and you lay it on the top of it and run it through a printing press like this. And so then the result is this. Um, so that's the, the finished um, project there. So um, so that's, that's the, basically the whole process. And I usually work larger. So which doesn't come out as well, but I have, have a plate and a print here. So I'll just show you. Um, so this is the transparency of a large one. So you can see that it, it's quite a bit bigger. And then uh, the plate for that is this. So the, the bigger you go, um, <clears throat> the more difficult it is to handle really because you have uh, more room for error, I guess is, is what happens. But I just wanted you to see this plate and then Here's the, uh, the finished picture of that one. And I'll, I'll show it on my, I do have a PowerPoint too, which I'll show you. So um, one of the nice things about printmaking is that you can choose the colors. And so most of the things that I do are artist proofs because I'm trying different colors. And I'm gonna show you on the PowerPoint some of the different colors that come out. And then if I decide I wanna do an addition, I pick one of those. And, and make the addition uh, all one color. So let me share my screen with you. Let's see if I can do this. Right here. Okay. Share. Okay. So um, does that look does that look right? 
So the, these are some of my latest works from last year and this year. And So part of this is cut off. I'm not sure what it looks like to you, but so here's here's a print that has uh, two different colors, and um, I haven't didn't make an edition of this, but uh, I tried it out in different colors, and one of these is on the Women in Their Work Artist Registry site, uh, and I chose the brown one for that. So you can see that's one of the kind of editorial processes that printmaking goes through. So that's that one. And then um, here's, here's two more, uh, blue and brown. And I kind of ended up liking the blue one better. So I've done more of those different shades of blue. Uh, and the title of this one is looking at the UFO. And so my themes I take from popular culture, uh, mythology, world mythology, and so on. And so I've done a few um, UFO related ones, because that's such a popular culture icon kind of thing there. And of course, they're self portraits mostly. And here I was looking at the, a, the drain in a swimming pool. But uh, as I was doing the work to me, it looked like I was looking up at a, a, a giant UFO. So that's how I got that title there. Um, and so then um, here's, uh, here's some more in different shades. And uh, this I did end up um, doing an addition. And the one that I picked was this, this one here on the right of the, of the blue. And so what this one was for is for a calendar from the, from the Mesa Museum in Arizona. And every year they put together a calendar and then they auction them off. Uh, so you have to do an addition of 50 prints for that so they can do 50 calendars. So that's, that's really quite difficult to make that, that many prints because it's a handmade process. But fortunately, the metal plates that I use hold up really well, so they don't degrade. And each plate, you can really do hundreds if you have enough energy to do that. So 50 comes out pretty well with that. Um, but before I chose that, I had, uh, I, here's two more colors that I tried out too before I put on, ended up with putting on the, the dark blue and the, the lighter blue. And the title of this one is Sisters of the Waves. And uh, it's kind of just um, this mythological idea of women coming out of the sea. That's sort of the reference of that. So um, then a few more pictures of my uh, more recent work. So here's the squirrel picture that I held up a minute ago. And so in this format, you can see a photograph of it and you can kind of see it better, more like what it looks like in, in real life. And this is um, one of my pandemic <laughs> works. Uh, there are all these squirrels in my yard. So I end up of taking hundreds of squirrel pictures of them doing all kinds of things, like digging up the flowers in my flower pots and so on. That's what's happening here. Um, and uh, so they're, they're doing all kinds of things like Right now they're mating, so they're all running around the trees. They're, that's pretty hard to catch, but when they're eating or digging, then they're pretty easy to take a picture of. So that's that's a photo here. And then um, just a couple more pictures of uh, other recent works. I've uh, I've done a lot of shadow pictures, like the first ones, and now I'm sort of moving into landscapes. And so here's a here's. Um, some landscapes here. Um, this is the same area that the Women of the Waves, Sisters of the Waves was taken, the, the lake, same lake, Lake Michigan. And then um, here's, here's another bridge water picture landscape. This one is in France. And I've also started turning to old pictures that I took a while ago and haven't done anything with since I haven't really been able to go anywhere for the past year or so. I'm looking through uh, old work and turning to landscapes now, since I'm not out walking around so much. So this is uh, one of those landscapes. And then I have a couple more. This is a landscape in Florida, pine, pine trees and canals. 
And um, this is a companion to that one. So this is a pair. And um, I, I like the blue, I mean, the brown color rather than the blue color of the previous uh, landscape. So I picked brown for that one. And then uh, the last one I wanted to show you is this one. And this is one that I did specifically for Print Austin. They have a trade portfolio, which uh, you do for this one, we all did 12. And then um, they uh, keep two for sale. So they're on sale on their website. It's gone virtual pretty much this year too, like everything else. And so these, these works are for sale on the website, two, two copies from the edition. And then um, the other 10 are swapped with the other participants. And so everybody gets 10 prints that were submitted to the, the show uh, randomly. They just choose randomly. So this is the one I submitted for that. So that's um, really, that's my latest work. So that's really up to date. And uh, that's, that's really all I wanted to share with you for recent work. So thank you for allowing me this opportunity. Appreciate it. So I'm turning it back to Diane then, thank you. Thanks, Carol. Is your work in two galleries in Georgetown? Um, uh, actually, it's in three, and, and they're in Round Rock. So in it's Round Rock, okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, two of them are brand new. The um, 620 Art Gallery, which is on 620 and IH35 right there. So that's a brand new gallery. And uh, I was really thrilled to be invited to be part of that. So there's five artists there. Um, a couple of them live in Round Rock, and then uh, a couple of them are in Austin. I don't know what the other one is. Um, and so then um, that one, and then uh, the Downtowner Gallery, which is right downtown Round Rock. I have one print in there. And then uh, the, the other one is the Timon Gallery, which uh, the, they, that gallery invited the, the Houston group, Print Matters, to sh take their member show which they had just had and bring it down to Austin for Print Austin. And so I'm also a member of that, that Houston group too. So, so I have work in that show just by chance um, because I was in, uh, my work was in Houston and they brought it down to Austin. So that was great. Um, so yeah, um, that's, that's where it is for my, my part of Print Austin. That's great. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for asking well, Thank me. you. Thanks so much. And our third artist is Deanna Meesh, who's gonna give us a tour of her brand new gallery, Lydia Street Gallery. On mute, okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. All right, well, um, welcome everybody. <laughs> uh, so I just started this gallery. I. Um, and, and it, it, it might seem odd to open a gallery during a pandemic, but I thought there wasn't a better time. Uh, my space was um, previously housed my studio and uh, some therapist friends and all of my therapist friends are now working virtually to be safe. So uh, I had already thought I was gonna make a gallery and then when they moved out. I said, well, now's the time. So uh, the first show is, uh, I'm totally thrilled. Uh, my former professor, Stephen Daly, who is a legend, uh, and uh, uh, he's a professor emeritus from UT Sculpture Department and uh, a just phenomenal artist. And I have uh, art in the gallery here spanning decades, decades of his work. Uh, I could have called it a retrospective, but he's already had one of those. So, <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll my little mini cart around and show you a few pieces. Um, I would show you the piece in the window, but I don't think we can see it very well in the current light. So, so I'll just give you a little, going to be a little tricky for me to see what you can see. Um, is there a way to make it so that I can see what you're seeing? Because I see you, um, Diane. 
but I don't see me. So I, the picture of what I am seeing is tiny. Does that make sense? Can we screen share? Can we spotlight her? Screen. If you push screen share, it'll share your whole screen. Where is screen share? Share screen? Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I clicked screen share and it says desktop one, whiteboard, iPhone, pad. I'll push a spotlight for everyone. Okay. How do I get rid of this? Do I press share? Oh, you're good. I, I Can't spotlighted count. it for everyone. Okay. All right. Oh, yes, there we are. Okay. <laughs> so this is the, the main gallery, uh, but there's a couple of gallery rooms. So um, you can see uh, there's our drawings. Um, there's a couple of prints in the show. There are some sculptures. And then there are uh, two, two of his integrated works where he includes both drawing and sculptural elements. So I'll try and get a little bit of everything. So um, we're gonna start here. Let's see. Okay. So this is a, a drawing. This is uh, actually back from 2012. Uh, called Letter, and he, he did a number of these. Um, I was just discussing with him today. Hopefully I'll do this justice. But uh, he, he uses um, elements of either, you know, what appear to be writing or are writing uh, and, and symbols that sort of read as, as writing. And so that's how this this piece is meant to be sort of red. So you go from here to here, or perhaps from here to here uh, and, and, and across. And then we have these, these figures um, and they're sort of having, having a dialogue as well in this letter. Um, he has these, these really unique ways of, of, of combining, you know, different spatial elements, you know, you, you look down here and you have, you know, this, this kind of gives the semblance of, of perhaps a building and then this sort of, uh, you know, what is this, some sort of celestial, uh, you know, fabrication of network, you know, with wine glasses and, you know, wine on, on a table and plants. Um, or we think they're plants. <laughs> uh, so just a, a, a different way of, 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 of making an image a little bit out of tradition, uh, you know, not a, um, you know, in perspective or, uh, you know, or with a, a unifying background. Um, so I thought this was an interesting piece. It also, you know, combines, uh, he likes to use the, the human head, the human form um, in these unusual ways with, uh, particularly uh, with this part of the drawing, you can see these sort of objects protruding from the female figure's head. It's as if they're tangible thoughts. It's, it's quite interesting. Moving on. Hopefully it's not too bumpy of a ride. This is actually a, a print, um, but I think it's just a, 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 a kind of a lovely print. And I thought with the art community, everyone might uh, have a, their own little, little take on this. This is, uh, from 2000, is that 2000? I th think this is 2002. I have it written down somewhere. Anyway, it's called The Self-Contained Critic. Uh, and he was thinking of art critics um, when he did this piece. I did talk about it with him, but uh, you know, 
my take. I'm, so I'm an art therapist, and so I work, you know, with with people in psychotherapy, and I I can't help but but also see, uh, you know, this is this is everyone's critic. <laughs> uh, it it critic, criticism is not a bad thing, but if it goes sort of in a if it takes you in a circle, it's not necessarily going to get you anywhere. So it's just an, a kind of an elegant simplicity to to uh, his you know his kind of unique way of working um precise and um but you know clean but but also you know rich and full of um emotion uh i think all of his work that sort of draws me in is the uh, emotional qualities this is just a nice companion piece to it as well. This is called the wall. I think we've all been in this situation before. Uh, the the words, they're 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 words, but they're not words. They they you might be able to spot some words you might recognize or letters you might recognize. A lot of it is really kind of just uh, gibberish. So it's not really meant to be read in a particular uh, narrative. You know, you can apply your own narrative to it. Um, my girlfriend saw this and said, oh, well, she's just got really healthy boundaries. So I like that. <laughs> I'm not sure how easily you can see this with the background. Um, this uh I should have grabbed the uh the list because I actually forgot the year on this. Um it's it's an older piece. Um you know the stands quite high. <laughs> and it has these integrated pedestals. This piece is called hybrid. Uh and uh, the lighting. So this is it's it's a, a gray patina and then this has like a, a pink patina on this little piece. So the the uh, figure is uh, you know gazing at at the object, right? So that that's a theme he visits a lot in in his work uh, is is that relationship of man to object or or human to human um, and and, and often the gaze is important. And of course the viewer is then gazing. <laughs> uh, and so you can just kind of keep, keep rolling with that. Um, so here he's, he's gazing at this little uh, Duchamp reference for all you art geeks out there. <laughs> How we doing that time. Before, before we go to the next room, I just want to show this is my favorite piece. I really uh, like it's uh, it's called Two Heads. He does uh, he'll write note notate where he was when he did this. So this was in uh, uh, Castiglione Fiorentino in Italy, and that would be the October two thousand two. He'll often write the zip code. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, you can see he's, he's sort of figures without there being a figure. You can, you can kind of see, you know, eyes here, um, you know, are these eyes, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and, and this, this, these figures are made of, 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 you know, all of these little uh, interesting symbols and forms, color, um, you know, Again, the the letters or or you know, uh, I like to think of it as sort of missed communication. I think that happens a lot with people. <laughs> okay, we're zooming down. This is the hallway. You can see uh, some pieces along the way. These are newer uh, drawings of the. He said they're not actually flowers. They are um, 
semblances. Uh, that wasn't quite the word, but these are quite large drawings. And I, I actually really like this one quite a bit because uh, it has some of the some of each of all of the elements with the with the writing. And this also has collage elements uh, taken from older drawings. So he'll, you know, take some of his old work and just that's one way to recycle. So the overview of this room. And I'm actually gonna turn the light up just a little. So the other draw, the other room had a lot of uh, figures in the in, in all of the work, uh, elements of the figure, uh, and and this room uh, has a lot of objects, <laughs> either objects or plants or as I said, uh, sort of the the semblance of a plant, what we might think of as a plant. In this piece. Go back here. Put it all in. See that this is one of his integrated works. It's quite large, probably a hundred pounds. This, uh, you know, so we've got this metal frame, and then these, uh, these. Three-dimensional objects, uh, literally attached to this drawing, um, and the drawing is all um, different different kinds of ink. I believe I thought some of it was graphite, but he actually uses a, a gray colored ink. It looks like graphite. And I'm going to zoom in. You can see just how detailed this piece is. Sorry for a little bit of the reflection of the gallery. In the shadow. Um, so this um, is called Man in the Middle. And his vision for this piece is that man is sort of being bombarded by, you know, these different, say, objects or, um, you know, even the background, but it also goes both ways. So he likes to play with dichotomy. So the, the, that man is also then projecting, uh, bombarding out. Um, and you see a lot of these different uh, kind of symbolic elements uh, you know, uh, you know, some you recognize that there's the infinity, and, uh, you know, this, let's see, can you even see that? This is a, a, you know, could be lips, could be vagina. Can I say that on air? Um, but uh, they're, they're, they're simple uh, and they, you know, it's sort of the bare bone um, symbols that he might choose, but some of it is 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 really just coming from his own mind. It's not necessarily even drawing from that particular reference. Um, so, kind of treating, you know, treating even letters in the same way, and how he mixes it up. Um, it, you know, it's, it's not necessarily a legible word. I can make my own, um, you know, meaning for that. Uh, and so I, I guess what, that's one of the things that draws me to, to his work. It, and, and I think with really with, with art in general, you, you don't have to necessarily know the language. <laughs> to be able to have that appreciation. Hey, Deanna, yes. can you tell me um, how long is this show up on view? So this show, 
I'm going to be doing six week shows. So this show is up until March 3rd. Um, and I'm doing by appointment during the week and, uh, and then have gallery hours on the weekend. And I'm doing, you know, mass social distance, take a temperature um, and four visitors at a, at a time on the weekend. I also have a molecule air filter that is supposed to kill viruses. So that seemed like a, a great no brainer investment during the pandemic. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Are we at our at our time? We are at our time. I want okay. to open it up for questions. Sure. It looked like pretty early on. There was a couple comments about um, the process video that Heidi showed. Mm, yeah, that was lovely. Heidi, can you talk about that? Anna, <clears throat> um, yeah, I not exactly sure what to say. Um, I love painting in watercolor, and it's been a journey to figure out my process. Um, I used to paint on paper, but um, that was so finicky. I tried to iron it and lay it under marble and all sorts of things to flatten it. But actually, there's an amazing company uh, in Buda here, Ampersand, which is female owned. And she came up with a technique to create these clay boards. And um, I really love them because I can dump an entire jar of water on them if I want to. I can, they're so tough. I can drill through them. I can sand on them. I can carve them. So it really gives me a lot of freedom to express and, and be open with my process and what I need to do to like be on the metaphorical like hero's journey to get it where I want, but also to embrace all those like different mistakes and keep going. Sort of like a growth mindset for watercolor, if that makes sense. Yeah, one, one person said seeing the process is inspiring as a complete beginner starting to explore the creative endeavors. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was supposed to remind you guys um, of this. I teach a mindfulness and art class because to me, all of this is about mindfulness and self-love and finding that inner quiet space. And um, if you end up being interested in joining um, in my next February session, it's um, buy one, bring a, bring a friend, so. Nice. Yeah, I just thought of that because she said she was a beginner, so. Dina, who's up next in your gallery? Uh, so next show is going to be uh, Kathy McCarty and David Thornberry. They're um, Austin Power couple. Uh, Kathy McCarty is uh, Austin, one of Austin's uh, well-known singer. She used to be in a band that I watched when I was in college uh, uh, called Glass Eye. And she's more known for her work with um, Daniel Johnson covers. But oh. She uh, started painting and her husband is a, a well-known Austin painter. So I thought, well, I'm going to show them as a couple. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that would be really fun. And Carol, what is your next project? Are you going to make prints out of your latest photographs or the ones that you re rediscovered? <laughs> no, you're mute. Yeah, yeah. I'm, now I'm unmuted. Yes, thanks for asking. Um, yeah, so um, I have uh, about 40 books of slides and so I'm kind of going through them all, which I've you know, done over the years. And I, I'm starting to scan them because you know, what, what do we do during the pandemic, right? That's a good project. So I'm scanning these slides and as I'm going through them, I'm thinking, oh, these, this might make a good print. So I'm, uh, that's why I'm, I kind of move back to landscapes a little bit because a lot of my slides are the places I've been 
uh, landscapes. And uh, so, yeah, I'm thinking of that. So it's, it's a really long process. Scanning takes forever. So I'm moving through it really slowly, but I'm finding things that I like in there that I did a long time ago. That's exciting, right? And affirming, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it's kind of backward looking, but um, that's okay. You know, it's good to, to reminisce and go back, back a little bit. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Cool. Yeah. So shall we go to breakout, Diane? Yeah, so now we're actually gonna to go to the next segment of tonight's event where we're gonna to go to breakout rooms. I'm creating an event, uh, different rooms right now. There's one for each of the artists who spoke tonight. So feel free to choose any of those rooms. Um, if not, it will assign you automatically. Feel free to chat me if you have any questions. Once you enter a room, it will not let you enter another room, but after five or 10 minutes, we'll all meet back here and we can discuss any other questions we have as a group going forward. And I'm gonna go ahead and open the rooms now.